Do you have any other to... suggestions, Clark? Well, <laughs> let's move to the other side. Don't no. worry. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll change the subject to the, the campgrounds. I'll tell you, the people that run the campgrounds out there are doing a wonderful, wonderful job. And uh, you drive through there and you can't hardly really find a space empty. I've heard that. So, and uh, now they've got life preservers. They free for people. And I've heard they're that. showing movies. They're, they're doing a great job. I don't, I don't know who they are. I haven't met them. Steve. But Just thumbs up as we continue to move forward through all of this and people appreciating each other, those that consider to wear masks in public places and those that are back in the churches and things like that, we're, we're going in the right direction. Thank you. I want to expand on uh, Ken's uh, comments here about our uh, cave ground. Um, this year we have a, a new managers, uh, namely uh, uh, Chad and, and Trudy uh, Pecos. Or Chad Pecos. Or Chad, uh, yeah, Chad and Trudy Pecos. And uh, so, you know, uh, when we had the uh, uh, country western uh, bluegrass people in uh, for the last eight, nine years, I always made a practice to go out and, and uh, welcome them to town, you know, in their trailers. And, and they kind of liked it, and, and I enjoyed it. And so this year, over the 4th of July, I went out and, and, and took the time to go through air, all, both sides of the trailer courts. And I tell you what, I really got my eyes opened up. Um, first of all, I was looking for uh, their license plates for the ones that are out of the state. And, uh, and uh, seen a, a few from South Dakota, uh, a few from Minnesota, and a few from Nebraska. The thing that really opened my eyes up was two things. The Plymouth County Plates and the people that live right here in town that are using that campground. Couldn't believe it. And the other side of that coin is the people that were within probably 50 miles from here. I met people from Holstein, Ida Grove, Orange City, Sioux Center, out there, that just shows that <clears throat> this year people aren't traveling very far away. And and uh, and to talk about Chad and Trudy just a little bit, I heard more compliments on the things they're doing out there and how they're taking care of that uh, campground from people from the outside and the local people of the job they're doing. I mean, just absolutely fantastic of what they're doing out there. And so thumbs up to those people. In fact, I went out this morning and met with Chad because I had, I'd heard and read that St. Luke's uh, Miracle Center had donated 50 uh, life jackets to the campground out here. And I wanted to get the, the, the background on it and know something about it. And so I went out and visited with Chad about it. And, and it's true, they, they, they donated uh, 50, 50. In fact, the matter is, the morning that I was going around on the 4th of July, one of the officers that is involved with each, uh, uh, out of Sioux City was camping out here, and, he was, and I was telling him about it, and he said, yeah, he says, we, I'm part of it, he said. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, drop him a nice letter and thank him for what they've done for us, but we have got a tremendous campground out there that's being used. Chad told me this morning, well, I knew that since Memorial Day, every weekend it's been booked solid. He told me for the next two months that he has got everything booked solid. And the thing that makes it, the, the, puts the frosting on the cake of the people I talked to said that we're coming back. We like it here. And that's, that's worth a lot. And so you speak about the campground, we've got a good thing going there. So. Just want to make sure that people in, in town know that uh, because you're having an opportunity, you help pay for it, and you're having an opportunity to, to use it, and, and we hope you enjoy it. So, so we may have to consider expanding. Say what? We may have to consider expanding it at some point. Well, the, but let's, the let's crawl street. forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's crawl forward walk on that. <laughs> yeah, the sixth, yeah, the sixth uh, black. Yeah, in between your, that might be all right. So what? 
<laughs> Outside your balcony? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Believe me. Uh, then you wouldn't have to drive down this <laughs> Maybe just walk out. But, but I'm really happy. Personally, I'm really happy to see what's happening here in Lamar's in that, in that, in that campground. Plus, you got the other thing is that I've heard, you know, and, and I know, you got a you got a pickleball court there. You got you got a tremendous golf course, twenty seven old golf course. There. There's a lot of amenities that they can do coming in and camping, and people enjoy that from out of town on the underground trail. Don't forget big the bike trail. Now the trail, you almost need a traffic director out I there on the fourth. It was really busy. And and the comments I got that came back to me uh, uh, from the people that were there on Chad and Trudy said, "Can't believe you absolutely can't believe how." Your managers are taking care of it. They come around and see if we need firewood. They had a big flag out there over the 4th of July. They had music every day. Mm -hmm. The little things, That's you cool. know, that they're doing that people just love. So. And back yeah, at the root of all that, Dick, is the work that the citizens did to chip in for the community betterment project. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. what made it happen. You're exactly right. And it took us a long time to get it where it's at. But I'll tell you what, I, for one, I'm proud of it. I think it's, sure. I think it's very thing. And thing just as long as we're talking that way, maybe this is out of order, but uh, uh, has the fishing situation, since we reduced some of the population, has anybody heard about people fishing out there? Has that improved? Has it gotten better? Does it need to be done again? Uh, the one down, um, the downside of cleaning it out has been there's a lot more frogs because there's no there's no little fish to eat the little frogs so now we're dealing with excess frogs but uh, they're catching fish okay. um, and not the little ones they're catching good sized bass and, and stuff out of there okay. um, I haven't gotten any reports of uh, and I haven't seen any the oh, yeah. koi fish right okay I haven't seen them I haven't been out there I mean I haven't been out there to, to uh, and and we've restocked it, right? Yeah, it's restocked. It got restocked. Yeah. When did that get restocked? I've had people. Oh, I don't know. April. Yeah. April. And it usually something. takes two to three years for yeah. all that to kick in. And that takes a little time. But I was just curious because, you know, that's a good activity out there. Yeah, and I think it was it was just bass in uh, bluegill. Probably. And it was stocked with the DNR. The, the, the hottest. Oh, probably some catfish. I'm guessing. The hottest spot. Some, some catfish actually existed um, through the transformation. The hottest uh, spot fishing. In the Mars is that little pond back out there <laughs> by the golf course, or by where we're living out there. Mm -hmm. There's cars out there every day. By the armory there? Yeah, Mike don't want me to tell him because he, he fishes out there. <laughs> 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 but it, it is, isn't it, Mike? Yeah. I can't believe it. Really? It, it looks like somebody just built a road right out there. There's been that much traffic. Yeah, my kids were out there this morning. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. All, right. All right. Moving on. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, let me just say this because uh, just before the meeting this morning, um, uh, Joni Ernst was in town, and uh, uh, one of the biggest reasons I think that she came is is uh, uh, she's uh, wanted to tour a, a small business to see what the impact was of the of the coronavirus and, and things she could do and and she was here was uh, we had a there was probably a dozen of us had an opportunity to meet with her and uh, one of the things that came out was the fact that uh, 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 people are not traveling uh, you know as, a, as an example as I give you out here at the uh, out here at the uh, RV park uh, they're staying closer to home I mean it, it was very evident that way uh, but uh, and, and she had pointed out several other things that, uh, and her purpose was being here. She uh, she toured the Brown Theater, as an example, and uh, and uh, so uh, it's given us a, a little bit of a boost there. Okay, consent items. All items listed on the consent agenda will be enacted by one motion. There be no separate discussion to those items unless a request is made prior to the time the council votes on the motion. Today we have five of them. Approval of the June 16, 2020 regular meeting minutes. Number two is a list of bills for period ending 6-30-20. And a number three is a renewal of the liquor license, outdoor service area, beer permit for the Legion, uh, daily stop, and the truck stop. 
Number four is the urban re revitalization tax exemption requests. And number five is the certification of the <coughs> municipal utility uh, liens re resolution. Does any council member want to pull any of these? Before? I got a question. Okay. We got 11 pages of bills. I believe that's the highest number of bills we've ever had. You guys just hold those back to the June year. 30th? End of the year. You're just trying to get them all paid by the end of the year? Yeah. Or are you just overwhelming us with paperwork so we won't come yeah. up with questions on them? We had trouble getting those all in, Rex, to be honest with you. Could a smaller font help you at all? Well, I know. What, what I was thinking is that they're just trying to, I, thought, I was thinking we should pull it, start going through page by page, but then somebody would get upset because they'd miss a tea time. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make a motion to approve consent items one through five with resolution on number five, 2027. I'll so second that. Then, then uh, move and second to uh, approve all the consent items yeah, one through up, five with the resolution on number five. Can we have a roll call on that, Beth? Now. Yes. 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 Motion carried. That includes the one point two million dollars of bill. Yeah. For one two week period. Uh, hang on for a little longer. Um, action items. Twenty twenty industrial uh, part grading project Thanks. award a contract uh, um, on, on that topic and let me find it here. here. Um, the council set this as a, a date to consider bids received for the 2020 industrial park grading project. Bids were received and operated open Tuesday, June 30th, at two, uh, 2020 at 10 a.m. The bids results are attached. A recommendation the administration can, uh, recommends the council to the lowest bidder and the financial impact as the land is owned by the Lamar's Business Incentive Corporation, the LBIC, and costs incurred by the city are repaid to the city by the LBIC upon sale of lots. Uh, the project is also in the urban renewal plan. Um, and uh, you can, as you can see what the bids were, I think on page two or three, there where they came in. So, any questions? We actually had a lot of interest. I think in this it. is the most bids we've ever had on the project. I think you're right, Rex. Yeah, yeah. It's all long as I've been sitting there, I think. And they were all fairly close. close. Yeah, I don't think we've ever had this much interest. Jason, you want to comment on it? No, just there was a lot. There was a lot of uh, business that, or uh, contractors I'd never heard of before. Um, so I don't know if they're, apparently they're looking for work. Um, it is the estimate, I don't know if it's on that sheet. The estimate that was given by uh, Schlofeld Engineering was two, 225,000. Uh, so 5,000. Lowest bids, 5,000 over. Um, I don't know if I have any other, yeah, the any lowest, other comments. The lowest bid came in to uh, Vander Witt and Sons uh, for $230,000. Dollars and seventy cents. Yeah, and currently they're already in town. Yeah, and they're the contractor that's working on that PD berm out there. And they've done work for us before. They've done the, the airport, right? Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? How's the one going at the PC? Please go. Um, okay. The berm is pretty much done. Um, Pipe is installed. There was pipe that needed to be installed on both ends. Uh, <coughs> north end pipe, when I looked this morning, is in. Uh, they still got to do some. Most of the work still has to happen on on the south end, right in the backyard there of O'Reilly, where there's that smaller uh, detention basin back there. That pipe, I think, still has to be installed, and that berm has to be built across there, but. That, well, that took a lot of dirt, didn't it? Mm, yeah, I've seen trucks going in and out of there all the time. Yeah. 
Uh, so, I mean, it looks like it's it looks like it's close to being done. Their completion date is not till September, though, um, and that really has to do with uh, probably the seeding portion of it. That puts it into the window of optimal time to to get grass to grow. Um, but that should be done shortly. Hmm. I don't know what the heck is going to happen. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, yeah. Any questions? <clears throat> I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 2028. Yeah. Awarding the contract for the 2020 industrial park grading project uh, to Vanderwood and Sons in the amount of 230,070 Second. Motion made and second to adopt the resolution number 20-28, award the contract to the 2020 industrial grade parking grade project to Vanderwood and Sons in the amount of $230,000.70. We have a roll call on that, Bev? Nelson? Yes. Matt? Yep. Good job? No. Donna? Yes. Wait. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, uh, moving on to discussion. Uh, Mike, do you have anything on discussion? I have nothing to bring up to you. Okay. Uh, Clark? Uh, just a couple of things. I, I do kind of want to just briefly just say why I voted no on the yes, last sir. one. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that needs to be done. I just, I'm concerned about doing it this, this year. Um, just, I'm just concerned about spending the money. Uh, so that's the reason. Um, it's not a bad project at all. Um, so I just wanted to say that. Um, I've received two calls from people who have voiced concern about the amount of food trucks in town. And um, they had some questions um, that I think I answered, and I'm not necessarily in agreement or disagreement with any of their concerns. But one of the things was do we have any kind of a and I, I believe the answer is no. When I said that, I believe the answer is no. Do we have any kind of ordinances? We protect our catering facilities and our restaurant facilities uh, when you come in to have a wedding or a uh, party in one of our facilities. We only allow certain caterers in. Um, do we have any kind of, or should we have any kind of um, permit fee? for people running food trucks out of our, our city? I, mean, uh, I guess it's a question, it, it, it was a concern. Give me an example of what you're talking about on a food truck. Uh, there's several um, trucks total, that have- Total does it like every week. Right, the, the, the okay. people will pull in, and they, they might have a burrito truck, or they might have a hamburger truck. I truthfully don't frequent them, so I don't know, but I've seen them. So they'll pull into a parking lot, and serve tacos for three hours out of a truck, you know, flip up the, the deal. Okay. So um, the concerns that I have been get asked is, you know, do we say to these people, if in order to have a food truck in town, it's a annual fee or a permit of X amount of dollars. They are competing, and one of the concerns was, was on this, that they're competing directly against our restaurants that are directly competing against COVID. And I, I told both the people, I said, well, I saw an influx of food trucks the last couple of years. So it's not just COVID that's bringing in food trucks, but I have noticed that there's more of them. And if it's something that this city should look at, that you'd be required pretty much like um, a venue at, at the fair or a venue at Art in the Park or whatever. You've got to pay for a spot, okay? And I'm not a big fee guy, but mm -hmm. the whole argument against, you know, they're competing against some of our restaurants pretty heavily, I think is legitimate. So it's a question more than anything. Well, I'll give you the ordinance, but then my, my thing to that was, okay, so the food, mar uh, the food market, the farmer's market, uh -huh. is in competition with the grocery store, but we allow that. We don't charge a fee for them, people to set up stands. Um, how food trucks have been handled, our ordinance says you cannot sell anything um, in on city property. So our parks or city right away. You can't 
lemonade stands. Kids set them up all the time on sidewalks. That's illegal. But we don't we don't go around arresting them. <laughs> yeah, we don't go around arresting them. Well, Jason, okay. uh, food trucks food trucks. Our policy has always been uh, same with there used to be businesses that would set up in Bumgar's parking lot or Dairy Queen parking lot. Uh, I think Godfather's maybe at one time and sold T-shirts. Okay, the policy has always been because of that ordinance is you need to find a piece of private property okay. Okay. and do it. Okay. I know Total Motors I brought up, they have a couple uh, food trucks come in every week on a Thursday or Wednesday mm -hmm. or whatever night. Um, that's on private property. Absolutely. I mean, so if it's just a matter of the city trying to get some kind of money out of it, we could charge a fee. No. Um, Jason, do you remember what we did for, um, how did we do that? And you guys have been here while I was here. I have to research that, Christy, but what did we do for the ice cream truck that time? He, he had to come here and get permission, and we had... streets in the parks. Yeah, he had to get permission that he could drive around town and, and sell out of that ice cream truck. Um, he told me at the time when I was in code enforcement, I had to inspect it to make sure it was up to snuff okay. uh, before he was allowed to do it. Um, but... You know, what do I know? I'm not a health inspector. Um, I believe food trucks should be regulated by, I mean, so the same thing as a restaurant. Do they, do they actually? <laughs> well, they also inspect all the little bakeries and things that at the fair. fair that well, they same to public health. The, the food trucks, um, to my understanding, are uh, do have to be inspected like on a yearly basis okay. uh, by the Department of Health. I have no idea. Um, and, and, in, and in regards to, um, um, and I, just because it is a popular location, you know, at Total Motors, they're using the parking lot. Total Motors, is, and it's my understanding of this uh, from some <laughs> investigation I've brought done, Total Motors is not bringing them in. Total Motors is allowing them to... A parking spot. To, correct. Um, they were approached uh, by these individual food uh, vending trucks okay. if they could use the parking lot and they obliged with that request. So it's